Climate change is the defining issue of our time, and we are at a defining moment. I have faith in what CSIT is doing, because you are invoking, in fact, a force, an army, that in fact will not surrender. And I'm talking about our children. The Carbon Zero Initiative of Trinidad and Tobago, CZIT, is a non-profit organization dedicated to TNT becoming a carbon neutral country and a leader in sustainable practices. It is intended to, to bring out in the school the awareness about matters of climate change and the environment and lead to action. The CZ team paid a visit to the 16 finalist schools and invited 10,000 students to become ambassadors in the fight against climate change. Now it's on to the knockout stages. The competition is fierce. The teams are prepped and ready. Who will win the first prize of a study tour to Costa Rica? Here are the rules. Each match consists of three rounds. Each team member is asked one question per round. Every correct answer earns 10 points. If the answer is incorrect or time runs out, the opposing team has a chance to steal for five points. At the end of every round, each team is asked a team question with 20 points. The winning team will move forward in the competition. And we are back with the CZ Secondary Schools Climate Quiz and battling on my right, Bishop's Anesty in Trinity 6th six, Form and on my left, St. Stephen's College out of Princess Town. And this is, of course, the second semi-final in this uh, episode of Shows. And wonderful to have you locked on. And before we get into battle, I just want to invite the patron of CZ, uh, ex-president Mr. Anthony Carmona, to please join us on set to just to greet the contenders today. And first off, he jumps across to uh, Trinity College 6th Form and, of course, Bishop's Anesty. He's always an action man, you know. Thank you very much, Mr. Patron, as he's branded as today. And let's get straight to the questions. What do you think about that, Alyssa? Are you prepared for this grand semifinal? Yes. yes. Yes, I am. Yes, indeed. Well, her hands are sweating away, I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right, but let's get straight to the questions. And we begin with this first one. Article 4 of the Paris Agreement refers to a nationally determined contributions, B, mitigation, C, adaptation, or D, transparency? A, nationally determined contributions. Very much correct. Wonderful start to your competition. This second semi-final. Jump across to Kayla. Kayla, how are you today? I'm doing good. Yeah, you look rather confident. Let's hope <laughs> we can get this question right. What is the focus of Sustainable Development Goal 7? Is it A, affordable and clean energy? Is it B, reduced inequalities? Is it C, sustainable cities and communities? Or D, climate action? A, affordable and clean energy. Is the answer A? Is that your final answer? Um... Yes. Yes, indeed. That answer is very much correct. Well done to you, Kayla. Just in the nick of time, she started that first letter and uh, then the buzzer went off. Well done. Good timing indeed. So, Lange, how are you today? Fine. Yeah, enjoying the Champions League football? No. Not really? All right. No problem whatsoever. Let's see if you can enjoy this question, though. Which of the following is the second leading source of carbon emissions? Is it A, use of fossil fuels, B, deforestation, C, plastic pollution, or D, None of the above. B, deforestation. Very much so. It is deforestation. Well done to you and to your team as well. Move across to Sarah. Sarah, what is the best thing about your school? Um, the best thing about our school is that, well, they offer a wide variety of subjects like languages and VAPA subjects. And there are also extracurricular activities in which you can think so you can be an all-round student lovely well done well done well said indeed vapor visual and the performing arts let's get to this one let's perform with this question which of the following is not a shoreline stabilization structure is it a a lighthouse b seawall c a jetty or d breakwater um a lighthouse a. very much correct yes a is the answer well done Go across to somebody who is in an honor society, Kristen. Yes, let's get with it. At what rate are sea levels rising? Is it A, one tenth inch per year? Is it B, one eighth inch per, year, per decade? Is it C, one sixth inch per decade? Or D, a quarter inch per year? 
A, one tenth inch per year. Very much correct, yes. <laughs> one tenth is the answer. We switch across to St. Stephen's College. Ariane is up next for battle. Where will COP25 take place? Is it A, Trinidad and Tobago? Is it B, Canada? How about C, South Africa? Or D, Chile? D, Chile. Very much correct. Yes, indeed. Indeed. Chile or Chile, whichever way you want to pronounce it as. Let's go to Eli. Eli is a man known for football. Yes, and you, no, you're not. I, I was trying to get a, a guess right. What are you known for in your school? <laughs> academics, I'm thinking. Mm, yeah. Yes, he's known for academics. Ah, wonderful. I'll take that. I'll take that. Academics. Let's see if your academia is working fine today. Carbon emissions were found to have grown more quickly in these two years than in, in, in each of the last three decades. Is it A, 2000 and 2010? Is it B, 2001 and 2009? Is it C, 2009 and 2018? Or D, 2011 and 2018? A, 2000 and 2010. Your academics is fine, brother. Well done. Yes, indeed. That is the answer. It is. Go across to my friend here. Lots of faith involved in this question, I'm telling you that. And uh, Faith, your question is, is as follows. What are examples of extreme weather caused by climate change? Is it A, less frequent tropical storms? B, increased hail storms? C, increased fog? Or D, longer droughts? D, longer droughts? Yeah, lots of faith there. Longer droughts indeed. Well done to you, Faith. And we go across to a tall individual. He's about uh, 5 feet 10 inches, possibly 6. Uh, my judgment is quite wrong. Joshua, how are you today? I'm fine, I'm fine. Yeah, you look, you look very confident. Let's see how it goes, brother. What does the acronym CR and W stand for in relation to the total energy supply of Trinidad and Tobago? Is it A, combustible renewables and waste? Is it B, complementary renewables and waste? Is it C, contaminated, refined and waste? Or D, compact, regenerated and waste? A. Combustible renewables and waste. Yes, brother. Well done. Well done indeed. Well done to you and to your team as well. Let's go to Daniel. Daniel is a lone soldier in this team. Well, Daniel, your question, which of the following steps has the EMA taken towards sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago? Is it A, taking action for the prevention, of control, prevention and control of pollution? Is it B, responding to emergency incidents and spills? Is it C, resolving environmental complaints through voluntary compliance? Or D, making recommendations for our national environment policy? D, making recommendations for our national environment policy. Very much. That answer is correct. Well done to you, Daniel, and to your team. Well done, indeed. And as all the previous rounds, we head across to the team question. This is something new being introduced into this round number one, the team question. Remember, folks, you just have 15 seconds to answer your team question, so make it snappy. Let's go right about now. And your question is, what is adaptation with respect to organisms? 15 seconds. Make it count. Adaption is the process by which animals change their, um, change their mindsets and feeding abilities to, to, what, to the changes in the environment. Can you repeat that question a bit louder? <laughs> Adaptation in, in organisms is where animals change their behavior patterns and feeding habits to meet the changes in the environment. That answer is very much correct. Yes, 20 points added to your score. Jumping 20 points again. And remember, folks, St. Stephen's, you just got 15 seconds to answer your question. So make it count. Here it is, right about now. Name one thing that would happen if there was no greenhouse effect. Um, so one thing that would happen if there was no greenhouse effect would be that the temperature of the Earth would... Be t it would be too cold for life to be able to thrive, well, as we know it. So um, that's one thing that would happen. Judges, it, it is absolutely right. Yes, life will not exist. And temperatures 
will be too cold. I'm telling you what, you're going to need more than a jacket to survive the greenhouse effect was non-existent. Let me tell you all about CZ. It is the Carbon Zero Initiative of Trinidad and Tobago, a wonderful group of persons really striving uh, for, to, to reduce the, the uh, carbon footprint in Trinidad and Tobago. And also, uh, they're striving to plant a lot of trees, you know, give some more oxygen to the environment. Of course, without oxygen, I would not be standing here today, nor these contenders will be standing here today. So go support the CZ family, the Carbon Zero Initiative of Trinidad and Tobago. And you can do your part for recycling as well. Let's see what the judges have to say about it. And certainly, at the end of round number one between Bishop's Anesty and Trinity College East, and of course, uh, St. Stephen's College, the team's results are as follows. We've got uh, 70 points, Bishop's Anesty and Trinity. And of course, St. Stephen's College are also poised at 70. We begin the second round of battle and we jump across to Alyssa and your first question this second round. The world's cities account for what percent of carbon emissions? Is it A, 50%? Is it B, 60%? Is it C, 65%? Or is it D, 75%? D, 75%. That is absolutely right. Well done. Well done to you, Alyssa, and to your team. Move across to Kayla, who is uh, a very short individual, but she possesses a very huge brain, I understand. Which of the following are main outputs to the hydrological cycle? Is it A, evapotranspiration and runoff? Is it B, evaporation and stem flow? Is it C, precipitation and through flow? Is it D, percolation and infiltration? D, percolation and infiltration. Unfortunately, that answer is incorrect. Alyssa, you have a chance to steal five points. A, evapotranspiration and runoff. Is that your final answer? Yes. I'm guessing that's a guess. That is well guessed indeed. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> my oh my. I'm going to check you for the lottery number for tomorrow <laughs> because I possibly might be a millionaire. Who knows? Solange, your question. In which century were chlorofluorocarbons first made? Is it the 17th century? Is it the 18th century? Is it the 19th century? Or D, the 20th century? A, the 17th century. A is incorrect. We're going to go across to player number two from St. Stephen's. Sarah, you have a chance to steal five points. D, 20th century. D, 20th century is the answer. Yes, it is. Well done to you, Sarah. Your question is as follows. Which of the following is a Trinidad and Tobago Act that must be amended to facilitate the rapid increase in solar power? Is it A, the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission Act? Is it B, the Regulated Industries Commission Act? Is it C, the Feed-in Tariff Act? Or is it D, the Renewable Energy Act? D, the Renewable Energy Act. Unfortunately, that answer is incorrect. Solange, you have a chance to add five points to your team's tally. A, the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission Act. That is very much correct. Yes, A is the answer. <laughs> Kristen, we move across to you. And what is your favorite subject, Kristen? Pure math. Pure math. My goodness. And you're in, in, in an environmental quiz. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> All right. Let's see how this goes. When are parties to the Paris Agreement required to submit their first bi bilineal transparency report and national inventory report? Is it A? 31st December 2022? Is it B, 31st December 2023? Is it C, 31st December 2024? Or is it D, 31st December 2025? A, 31st December 2022. Unfortunately, that answer is incorrect. We move across to player number three. Ariane, you have a chance. D, 31st December 2025. That answer is also incorrect. The proper answer should read December 31st, 2024. Ariane, your question, approximately how many gigatons of CO2 are emitted by human activities per year? Is it A, 10, B, 18, C, 25, or D, 35? C, 25. That answer is incorrect. We're going to go across to Kristen. You have a chance to answer. D, 35. That answer is very much correct. D is the answer. 35 gigatons of CO2. Eli, you're smiling a lot. Are you a very happy man? 
I'd like to say so, yes. I would, I would certainly recommend you continue to be a happy man, indeed. We need a lot of happiness in Trinidad and Tobago these days, folks. Which of the following is a step to the Environmental Management Authority made towards sustainable development? Is it A, providing a transparent framework to facilitate policy making? Is it B, planting of more trees? Is it C, promoting educational and public awareness programs? Is it D, conducting analysis of air, water and land for environmental studies? C, promoting education and public awareness programs. Unfortunately, that answer is incorrect. We move across to player number four, Faith. You have a chance to get five points. Provide A, providing a transparent framework to facilitate policy making. That's a good guess. Well done. Yes, it is. Well done, Faith. A big sigh of relief there. Lots of pressure being regulated there by Faith. And your official question is as follows. What is the main goal of the national environmental policy? Is it A, to become carbon neutral by the year 2030? Is it B, to create a greener Trinidad and Tobago? Is it C, to hold persons accountable for the degradation of the environment? Or D, to achieve environmentally sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago? Um, e. Fortunately, that answer is incorrect, and we jump back across to Eli. You have a chance to redeem yourself, my friend. D, to achieve environmentally sustainable development in Trinidad and Tobago. Well done. Absolutely right. It is right. Indeed, it is right. Joshua, Joshua, I, I, remind me, what sport do you play? Basketball and track. I, I could imagine that very much. You look like a 200-meter sprinter. Yes. <laughs> I could probably be, be in the Olympics next year. Let's see how this goes. What is the meaning of the acronym ITMO under the Paris Agreement? Is it A, internationally traded mitigation opportunities? B, internationally transferable mitigation outcome? C, intentionally transfer, transferred mitigation outcome? Or is it D, internally treated mitigation outcome? B, internationally transferable mitigation outcome. Very much correct. Yes, it is. That is right, Joshua. Looks like you're shooting to victory right about now, brother. Daniel, your question is as follows. What are some places that carbon dioxide exists and is sorted? Is it A, atmosphere, soil, and oceans? I beg your pardon, is stored, all right? Is it A, atmosphere, soil, and oceans? Is it B, fossil fuels and mineral ores? Is it C, fertilizers and pesticides? Is it D, clothes and buildings? A, atmosphere, soil, and oceans. Very much correct. It is. Well done. Well done. Some places that carbon are stored. Very much so. So, folks, we jump across to a very exciting part of this entire uh, show. It's called the team questions. And remember, folks, I'm just going to give you a gentle reminder. 15 seconds. That's all it takes, all right? Here is your question right about now. Why are mountainous regions more susceptible to landslides in some areas with a two-degree global temperature rise? Um, mountainous regions are more susceptible to landslides in some areas with a two degree global temperature rise because it has ice in the mountain caps. So when the ice melts, it enables the, it softens the land and it makes landslides more easily to happen. We await the judge's decision to this particular response. And that answer is very much correct. Thumbs up indeed. Yeah. Well done to Bishop Aniston Trinity College Sixth Form. Remember folks, 15 seconds, make it snappy. Here it goes, like this. Why is water vapor not responsible for global warming? So, water vapor is not responsible for global warming because water vapor only amplifies the temperature change created by other, other gases and fossil fuels, such as sulfur hexafluoride, carbon dioxide. So, um, that's why water vapor is on me. That answer is very much correct. Yes, it is. Well done to both teams. And uh, oh my goodness, this is certainly a very stiff battle. I'm going to be branded it as a cardiac arrest of a man. Simply put as that, all right? Nail biting, cardiac arresting, anything you want to put it as. Let me tell you, it is not as good as a West Indies cricket team in the glory days. I'm telling you that much. And I'm going to jump across to Solange. Tell us a bit about your school and uh, why is your school probably the best? Well, the facilities are nice and really good. You know, we have plenty high-tech stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
I understand your steel pan uh, group is also yeah. really good. Your steel yes. pan. Yeah, lovely. And do you play the pan? Occasionally. Oh, and what about you, Kristen? Do you support? Or do you play the pan as well? No, I don't play pan, I play violin. Violin. A group of musicians right about now, folks. And let's see how things go with the scorecard. And after round number two, including the group questions, it goes like this. Bishop's Honesty, Trinity College 6th Form, 130. St. Stephen's College out of Princess Town, 110. Welcome back. This is the final round of battle and Alyssa is up first. Let's go with it. Which of the following measures will reduce fossil fuel use? Is it A, low cost of, fuel, of fossil fuels? Is it B, low incentives for renewable energy? Is it C, absence of feed-in tariffs? Or D, carbon tax? D, carbon tax. Very much correct, Alyssa. Well done. Well done. Brilliant stuff from Alyssa. We move across to Kayla. Kayla, how many sustainable development goals are there? A, 14, B, 15, C, 16, or D, 17? A, 14. That answer is unfortunately incorrect. Alyssa, do you have a response? D, 17. Very confident answer, very much correct. Very much correct. Alyssa has certainly studied her material for a long time. Solange, which of the following is considered an ozone-depleting substance? Is it A, carbon dioxide? Is it B, chlorine? Is it C, water vapor? Or D, nitrous oxide? B, chlorine. Very much correct. Chlorine is the answer. <laughs> chlorine is the answer. Sarah, your question is as follows. By how much? Would the same weight of methane as carbon dioxide raise the atmospheric temperature? Is it A, two times? Is it B, four times? Is it C, six times? Or is it D, eight times? B, four times. That answer is very much correct. B is the answer. We jump across to Kristen, who is in the Honor Society. I must say, what is the Honor Society about? Well, the Honor Society is a group of students who um, just have really good academics, not just academics, but overall um, uh, well-developed, um, well-rounded individuals in your school. Very much. Well done. Well done. Good job indeed. All right. Let's see how it goes. And it is as follows. Which sustainable development goal focuses on climate change? Is it A, goal 13? Is it goal 14? Is it goal 15? Or D, goal 16? A, goal 13. Very much correct. Goal 13 is the answer. Well done, Kristen. <laughs> Move across to Ariane. Ariane, your question, what does Article 13 of the Paris Agreement cover? Is it A, mitigation, B, adaptation, C, transparency, or D, food security? C, transparency. Very much correct, yes. C is the answer. Well done, well done. Eli, my academic friend, let's go with it. In which city did Trinidad and Tobago ratify the Paris Agreement? Is it A, Port of Spain, your capital? Is it B, New York, the Big Apple? Is it C, Paris, or D, Copenhagen? C, Paris. Unfortunately, Paris is the incorrect answer. We jump across. B, New York. Yep, indeed, the Big Apple. Yes, well done, New York City. Faith, your question goes like this. What is the estimated temperature increase if carbon emissions are reduced to zero by the year 2100? Is it A, limited to 2 degrees Celsius? Is it B, limited to 4 degrees Celsius? Is it C, limited to 6 degrees Celsius? Or is it D, limited to 8 degrees Celsius? A, limited to 2 degrees Celsius. Well done. That answer is very much correct. Yes. <laughs> limited to 2 degrees Celsius. We go across to Joshua who is a sprinter and also a basketballer. The Environmental Management Act created the first legal framework for the management of environment-related issues in Trinidad and Tobago. In what year was the act implemented? Is it A, 1983? Is it B, 1992? How about C, 1995? Possibly D, 1999? C, 1995. Yes, brother. Well done. Well done indeed. <laughs> well done to you. Not only is a basketballer or a sprinter, he's a very good uh, quiz representative as well. Daniel, your question is as follows. How many different categories are there for greenhouse gas reporting? Is it A, three, 
B five, C seven, or D nine? B five. That answer is unfortunately incorrect. Joshua, you have a chance to add five points to your tally. C seven. Is that a guess? Yes. Very lucky guess indeed it is. <laughs> yeah. Seven is the appropriate answer for that last question. Smiles all around. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what. The group question comes up right about now. Let's see how it goes. Why has ozone depletion severely affected the Antarctic pole? Um, the ozone depletion has severely affected the Antarctic pole because the gases are dense around the Arctic poles. Uh, yeah, the CFCs are dense around the Arctic poles and they deplete the ozone faster there because of the low temperatures. We await. Can you repeat the answer just a bit louder? Um, the Arctic, the Arctic, the Antarctic poles are depleted faster because of the CFCs being they are very dense and they operate faster in colder region, lower regions. That answer is unfortunately incorrect. We move across to St. Stephen's and your group question. Reminder, just 15 seconds, all right? So make it count. Here we go, right about now. What is the greenhouse gas effect? So the greenhouse gas effect, um, it causes life to, uh, well, the, the gases in the atmosphere, greenhouse gases, they allow heat to be trapped in the atmosphere, warming the earth, um, providing a suitable environment for life on earth. We await the judge's response to that particular answer. Can you repeat it just a bit louder? So the greenhouse gas effect, it occurs when, so greenhouse gases in the earth's atmosphere, they trap heat from the sun and this allows for life to thrive on Earth. That answer is very much correct. Yes. Thumbs up from the judges. And we simply have to await and see what the tally looks like. But let me tell you something about St. Stephen's College. They're from Princess Town. And this particular school would like to, I would really like to know exactly where you guys are from. Trin City, right? Yeah. Yes, I'm spot on with my geography. But uh, tell me a bit about uh, your steel pan side. Um. It incorporates um, all the levels in school, so the boys' school, the girls' school, and form six. And well, they learn all these songs together and play with their heart. Lovely. Yeah, they play with their heart. I, li I like that sort of thing. Yes, they play with their heart. I'm going to jump across to uh, Faith. Let me, let me just uh, juggle Faith's memory a bit. Uh, what was their most uh, favored moment in your school? Um, my most favored moment in my school will be receiving my first commendation letter. Very much so. Well done. You're an academic person. Yes. I, like, I like that very much. And uh, folks, there you have it. A little geography lesson at Trinity. And of course, uh, St. Stephen's from Princess Town. Let's see what the judges have to say at the end of round number three. And let me tell you what, it was a stiff battle. But at the end of it all, Bishop's Anesty and Trinity, 180. St. Stephen's College, 165. Well done. Well done indeed to both teams. But... Congratulations to Bishop's Honesty and, of course, Trinity College Sixth Form on a fine battle. I'm going to invite uh, some members of the CZ family. Of course, the founder, Mr. Baldew Singh, and uh, also uh, the patron, Mr. Kamona, is going to join us to do some presentations of tokens as well. It was a tough battle. St. Stephen's, my heart goes out for you because I know you are very passionate about the environment. Keep fighting the fight and keep working with CZ. Bishop Anstey and Trinity Colleges, I know you're also very passionate and we look forward to continuing to work with you. You're moving on now to the finals. Congratulations.
congratulations to both teams and of course in the big final it's going to be Bishop's Anesty and Trinity College Sixth Form coming up against St. Francois Girls of Belmont. You've got to keep it locked on. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Sachin Ramsubag. And remember, you can do your part to reduce the carbon emissions footprint and also you can do your part to reduce pollution as well. Until next time, bye-bye.